Hey everyone, my name is Diego Gaz and I'm from the No Facility AOML in Key Biscayne, Florida. It is February 4th, 2021, around 4.30 in the morning in our current time zone. I'm aboard the research vessel, the Ronald H. Brown, as a participant for the p and &E cruise. Uh, the goal for this cruise is to service uh, the NOAA section of Deep Ocean Moorings, otherwise known as the Parada Northeast Extension. Uh, this section is made up of a bigger part of an array called the Parada Array, uh, which is a international project managed between France, uh, Brazil, and the United States uh, in order to collect uh, ocean observations and data. Uh, this information is used for weather forecast modeling, uh, long-term data monitoring, which is also supplemented by hydrography work that our lab conducts on the ship, and also helps provide data for scientists to understand what's happening with our oceans in the tropical regions here in the Atlantic Ocean, how and why it's changing, and how it's impacting tropical climate. We're sitting right by the CTV rosette, and this, this whole package kind of just helps us understand and monitor uh, different aspects of the, the ocean that some of our ocean scientists want to study on. Um, so it can take uh, temperature and conductivity measurements, which can extract density, and it also can take ocean measure uh, oxygen measurements. And all of this is used also with the music uh, profiler, which helps us see like current flow as it moves across the ocean from a fixed point. Um, and we take repeated samples every year at the same point and take that data in with other data from the moorings around the area that we're going to. Uh, just to see how the ocean is changing over time. Uh, for the most part, it's, this project that we're doing is for monitoring the current profile by 23 West and also monitoring like an oxygen minimum zone in the area there, which is where we have the oxygen sensors in. Uh, and so we use that to kind of understand how, the, like, how everything is changing from the currents and how much water is pushing through and how much uh, and what kind of qualities it has like in the other uh, parameters that we're researching. Everyone, it's February 8th. It's, um... A little past noon and just wanted to show you guys what the CTV recovery looks like just after we finish the cast here. So we got one of our volunteers in the survey tech about to recover this, the, the package. Position is coming down, coming down. 15 North 38 West. Uh, we'll be showing you a uh, morning deployment today. So, uh, we're still doing the deployment of the morning for the, for the Brazilian portion of the Indian array. Currently, everything is taut, and the scientists from our from the laboratory in Washington for PMEL are attaching sensors along the cable for up to 500 meters. All these sensors are going to be a combination of temperature and uh, indoor temperature and conductivity sensors, uh, so they can get up to a uh, so that they can get up to like a profile up to 500 meters below the uh, where the mooring will be uh, deployed at. And it's uh, the end of the day. Uh, we just finished deploying the mooring, and now we're going to be doing our last CTD cast of this entire trip. So we'll be observing the, our last CTD deployment with our survey tech, Scott, and our project volunteer, Brianna Gibbs. two minutes it's gonna be February 24th uh, we're about 40 nautical miles away from our QS port call and I figured I think one thing I hadn't shown you guys yet was uh, uh, what, more or less what our CTD frame was in detail so I thought I'd show you guys typically what our frames job is supposed to do is uh, hold all our bottles and our sensors and uh, data acquisition system in place so typically what we have is a primary side of sensors and a secondary side of sensors. And each set of sensors will have 
um, temperature, a temperature sens sensor followed by a conductivity sensor, which is used for calculating salinity, followed by an oxygen sensor, which it's, it's in the name. Um, this all, all the water that flows through here is being drawn through and being exhausted out the back through a water pump that's here. Um, and everything that you see on this side is identical on this side as well. We have an altimeter on this side, which is used for uh, CTD casts where we anticipate um, we might get close to or uh, approaching the bottom floor. Um, in our cruise, we've only done that once. And all data that's collected from each of the sensors is run through this big unit here uh, that is uh, the otherwise called the fish. And that data and that data is sent up through the, the sea cable, which usually we have it disconnected now, but that usually goes up through the winch cable uh, up top that you've seen in previous videos um, and sends the data through there. We also have an ADCP system, um, which are these two yellow units here for acoustic profilers. Uh, each of them is being uh, getting their power supply through a separate battery here. And the whole ADCP system um, is run independently from the Seabird instruments that I showed you guys earlier. And for the, the sake of the PE trip, we typically only need 12 samples per cast. Um, but you'll see there's more. We have 17 or 18 bottles in the frame, which only serve as a backup. And each of these bottles can hold more than enough more than enough water than what we need uh, to capture the sam or sample water at various steps from here. What we'll do between every cast is that after they get released, we kind of typically will arm them back up. So if for instance, we have a bottle set to fire from a certain pin, which is all controlled from the big uh, fish unit that's controlled through the computer. We can pull a lanyard on one of these hooks, pulls a bottle open, um, and then when we send the command to capture that bottle, there'll be a signal to for this pin to spring free, which will cause the bottle to then open, shut and capture the, the water at that depth. So typically what that'll look like, I can demonstrate it here, is that when we send the command, this will spring out and then it'll release and shut. Okay, we're a few days away from our port call in Key West, just one hour ahead of Eastern Standard Time, uh, 2 p.m. And I'm in what we all call aboard the ship, the uh, salt dungeon, which is a temperature controlled room to help run our salinity samples here. And this is all done through our auto cell, uh, auto cell machine. And a fully uh, assembled uh, process for what we do is will typically look like this, which will have our sample seawater here, our pump which draws the water and feeds it through the plumbing in here, and then the internals of the auto cell will look something like this, which is plumbing that can uh, it's connected to four connectivity cells that sits within uh, a temperature controlled bath full of a DI water. Uh, so we'll flush out these cells a few times with the sample seawater that we're analyzing. Uh, stop all the pumps so that the, the water stays stagnant uh, with the connectivity cells here. Uh, set the setting to read. And then that all gets calculated and averaged out into our data logger software um, that's on our laptop here before backing it up into our shared drive for our chief scientist, Greg, to analyze later. So we hope you found that of some use and we hope you have a really good day today.